In this video, we are going to discuss general performance of an ejector while it is picked up and operating. Any ejector has a performance curve that is unique to that particular ejector. A typical curve for a single stage ejector describes the relationship between absolute pressure at the ejector inlet to the suction load that it handles. We will discuss how variables such as motive flow, suction load, non-condensable and condensable load all impact ejector and ejector system performance. The first step is to understand the performance curve. This ejector is designed to operate at a set operating pressure and handle a design load. If the actual load were less than design, the ejector would operate at a lower pressure. An ejector will operate along its performance curve provided that the motive steam supply pressure is at or above the minimum design value and the discharge pressure is at or below the maximum design value. These are two important factors. Now, let's look at some variables and how they impact the ejector's performance. First, let's consider the motive flow. When the motive flow for a critical ejector is increased beyond the minimum required, there is very little impact on ejector performance. Looking at the ejector, you will notice the shock wave push out to the right, further away from the diffuser inlet. This is because there is now much more energy than the compression requires. If you look at the performance curve for this ejector, you will see the operating point on the curve remains in the same place as motive pressure is increased. It is important to note that capacity may decrease for a significantly higher motive flow rate than design. Next, let's consider the suction load. When the suction load is decreased, the suction pressure also decreases accordingly. Let's take a look at our values. You can see that as the suction load decreases, we have a decrease in suction pressure. This should correspond to our performance curve. If we look at the operating point on the curve, we can see that as we move along the curve and the suction load decreases, the corresponding suction pressure decreases as well. When the suction load is increased, the suction pressure increases accordingly based on the ejector's specific performance curve. Next, let's discuss the non-condensable load and the effect on the system. On a multi-stage system, it is very important to consider not only the effect on the first ejector, but the downstream equipment as well. If the non-condensable load is increased, this will add to every ejector. This can significantly impact the performance on the last stage ejector because it is typically a smaller size. The added non-condensable load to this last stage ejector will cause this ejector to ride up its performance curve, which we now know will increase the suction pressure as a result. The suction pressure for this ejector is directly tied to the discharge pressure on the ejector upstream. The discharge pressure for the upstream ejector will increase accordingly. This above design discharge pressure will cause a break of all upstream ejectors and will significantly degrade the system suction pressure. Let's consider the condensable load. When condensable load is increased above design, there are two different scenarios that can occur in a multi-stage system. In the first scenario, the downstream condenser can handle the extra duty without causing the ejector's back pressure to increase above design. There are a number of reasons why it can handle the extra duty, including a higher than design water flow, lower than design cooling water, and no condenser fouling. In this case, the increased condensable load will only cause the first stage ejector to ride up its performance curve and the suction pressure to increase accordingly. The second scenario is when the downstream condenser cannot handle the extra duty. This then causes the ejector's back pressure to increase above design. In this case, the first stage ejector breaks down and suction pressure is significantly increased. As you evaluate the performance of your unit and the variables that can impact performance, the best tool for preventing and diagnosing vacuum system problems is proper instrumentation. Graham suggests pressure and temperature readings at all process and utility connections as highlighted here. The only exception is that pressure readings are not required at the condensate outlets. 
For dry and saturated motive steam applications, it is very important to assure very high quality steam at the ejector motive inlets. To accomplish this, Graham recommends a cyclonic coalescing separator as close to the ejector as possible. We have discussed the general performance of an ejector, the performance curve, and the effect that variables have on the ejector and ejector system performance. For additional technical questions concerning your ejector or ejector system, please contact Graham directly.